Hi guys and welcome to Airability, your regular dose of lead therapy. And today we're actually going to be talking about lead. We're going to be talking about pellet testing. I see lots of forum posts about this and that is the best pellet. I get a lot of people asking me, Matt, what is the best pellet for my rifle? Well the truth is, I can't tell you and nobody else can tell you. There are no shortcuts in the pellet testing game. What you need to do is get hold of as many good solid brands of pellets that you can and test them through your rifle because every rifle is different. Even rifles of the same manufacturer using the same type of barrels can be different. The message here that I want to um, get across first of all in this video is there are no shortcuts. You can't guarantee that a pellet that somebody else finds successful in their gun will be successful in yours. And if you don't test and test again, you'll never know there might be a better pellet than what you're shooting for your gun. Now, I'm going to show you a short video about how I go about pellet testing. And I may need to make this really, really clear that this is a condensed version of how I go about pellet testing. In the real world, I shoot many, many cards with each type of pellet to make sure the results I'm getting are consistent and that um, I'm taking user error out of the equation as much as possible. If you just shoot a few pellets of each brand, you're never going to know what's right for your gun. You really need to work the pellets. So here we go. We're going to have a look at how I go about pellet testing. I just want to make sure that everybody understands the conditions in which I shot these pellet testing targets. I shot them on my home range, which is just under 25 metres long, half of which is indoors, inside the shed, and half of it is very shielded and down the side of the house. There was also virtually no wind on the day I shot these targets, so the... Um, output was probably as close to shooting indoors as I would ever get. And we're off. The first line is the control pellet that I'm testing here. This is my usual pellet that I shoot in competitions. Um, as you can see here, I've got the scope set so they hit below the bull so I don't obliterate my point of aim so I can keep shooting as accurately as possible. So there we go. The first two were a bit sloppy. That was me warming up and I gradually got tighter. Now we're moving on to a pellet I've never used before here in number one and um, it seems pretty much all right at the moment. It might be worth further investigation and uh, giving it a longer go. Now what you need to understand is that each row here would represent many many cards if I was truly doing some pellet testing. I've kind of condensed the process to show you guys how we'll go about it in the video. So here the third choice of pellet is pretty decent as well so it's going to be close between one and two which is the best. And three is the Joker. It's the most expensive pellet. It's one of these new breed of 177 slugs that are meant to be storming the market. But as you can see Sadly, I didn't have much luck with it. Now, here's the card once I've shot it. Let's have a closer look. Um, as I said, the first two groups on the control pellet was me being a little sloppy. Then it tightens up. Um, line one is pretty good. I was in the floor. It was a new pellet. There was no preparation involved with that pellet. So, after I measured it and I came to the decision that um, the control pellet and the first pellet were actually the best. I decided to take them forward into the next stage of testing. I used this gauge here just to double check. So A is the control pellet and we're going to shoot some more groups. And as you can see here, those groups there are pretty much identical to on the first target and that's the result I get again and again when shooting my trusted pellet. So we're going to move over onto pellet B here. And this pellet is the one that came out on top of the three new pellets that I tested a moment ago. And as you can see here, the groups, they are pretty tight. Um, there's been no preparation involved in this pellet. I'm shooting from the tin and I'm just seeing how well it will work. One thing you've got to notice is groups sometimes lie to you because the cardboard can break away in unpredictable patterns. But it does give you a good idea of how 
um, your gun will be grouping and if it's shooting any flyers. I shot a target with my favourite pellet which you can now see is Barracuda FT. This is my sized, weighed and prepared pellet here which is pretty good and here is the mystery pellet. So I shot a card with the mystery pellet and I got 25017X which I don't think is bad for a pellet that came straight from the tin without any preparation. So next time what we're going to do is we're going to see if pellet preparation can improve this for this particular brand because sometimes a bit of pellet preparation can even bring more accuracy out of your pellets. Well, I hope you found that interesting. And um, I just want to reiterate that is a really condensed version of how I go about pellet testing. My actual pellet testing goes on for weeks and months, comparing pellets against cards I've shot with other pellets, etc, etc. So I want to congratulate everybody. When it comes to pellet testing, you've now reached the halfway point. And there's going to be a part two to this video. And what we're going to do is the, you know, the question mark pellet. What is that pellet? The pellet that came out pretty good against my control pellet. We're going to take that further to another video. And we're going to see if we can further improve that 250 17x performance by sizing, weighing and lubing the pellets to make sure they're even more consistent than what is coming out of the tin. So until then guys, you remember, keep living that air gun dream and take care. Bye bye.